Good morning, Fairfield Christian. It is Monday morning. It's time to get into our devotions today. So once again, we are continuing the story, looking at the Bible as one continuous story from Genesis through the book of Revelation. And today we are looking at one of the most important things to happen ever in human history. Next week, we'll look at the most important thing that ever took place in human history. Uh, this week, probably the second most important thing. Uh, if you'll remember last week, we left off with Jesus making his triumphal in entrance into the city. People are chanting, they're yelling, they're screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest, as Jesus is making the entrance of a king into the city of Jerusalem. People are excited, they're happy that he's there. We know a lot that takes place during this week, the last week of Jesus' life. We know most of what he did throughout the week. We know he went to the temple complex several times. We know that he's already made a lot of people upset over the three and a half years of his ministry. But this week is like the final straw. He really makes people so upset that they are going to actually carry out their plan to kill him. Jesus is talking to people at the temple complex, whether the individuals, uh, preaching, teaching, but also he's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, making the Pharisees upset because the Pharisees were all about rules. They loved their rules. Now, in the Old Testament, there were hundreds of commandments. I know we learned the Ten Commandments, but those were really just the first set of commandments. There are hundreds of commandments in the Old Testament. And the Pharisees added even more rules on top of that. Pharisees loved their rules. And Jesus basically, basically comes along and says, Listen, let's reduce all of this down to two important things. Love God and love others. Those are the most, that's the most important thing. The Pharisees are like, wait a minute, you're getting rid of all these rules? And Jesus is like, yeah, because it's not about the rule. It's about where your heart is. It's about following what God says. And so the Pharisees were really upset about this because now Jesus is coming in and changing everything. And the Pharisees, they got upset too because Jesus was telling people, listen, it's not about what you have. It's not about the money. It's not about the stuff. In fact, he tells the rich young ruler, you want to come follow me? Give up all your stuff. Give up all your money. Then come follow me. And the Bible says he walked away sad because he had a lot of money and a lot of stuff that he, he just couldn't give it up. The Sadducees were in the same place. The Sadducees were the rich, high-class religious rulers of Jerusalem during that time. They had a lot of stuff. And if Jesus is telling them to get rid of their stuff, uh, that's not going to be easy to do. They didn't want to lose their status, their position. Their money was about power. And they didn't want to give that up. So they were upset too. And what a lot of people don't realize is the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't like each other. They didn't get along. The one thing they had in common was that they didn't like Jesus. So they joined together to kill him. It's probably the only thing that could bring them together because they really didn't like each other at all. And during this week, that plotting is going on. They're trying to figure out how we're going to kill this guy. And they finally find an in. They find a way into his inner group. And that's through Judas. Uh, we believe that on Wednesday is probably the first time Judas met with the religious leaders to talk about betraying Jesus. Uh, Wednesday was kind of a down day during the week. Uh, Jesus didn't do a whole lot. Probably just hung out with his disciples. Probably just relaxing a little bit. And that probably gave Judas time to go meet with the religious leaders to figure out how he's going to betray Jesus. And we know that later on in the week, uh, in fact, the day before Jesus died, we know that he had a, a dinner with his disciples, with his 12 disciples, including Judas. Judas was there. Uh, Jesus, made a, uh, Jesus made a lot of predictions during this time. He did a lot more teaching and preaching during this time. It was his last opportunity to feed the word into his disciples. Remember, Jesus is the word. Everything he says is the word. So it was his last opportunity to teach them. And his disciples are there and they're soaking it all in. And this is actually where our scripture verse comes from today. Jesus is teaching his disciples. Now, after the supper, we know that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas brings the, the religious police, basically the temple guard and things like that to them. They arrest Jesus. They take him away. He has a trial overnight. Now, this was actually illegal. According to Jewish culture and law, it was illegal to have a trial at night. Yet, that's when they had the trial for Jesus, so even their trial was illegal. But that was how much they hated Jesus. They were willing to break the law to get him killed. They wanted him gone. They then took him to the Romans, because the Jews actually couldn't kill him themselves. Remember, the Jews were under Roman rule. The Romans controlled everything. So they had to get permission from the Romans. Pontius Pilate, who's the Roman governor, says, this guy isn't guilty. Why are we, why are we trying to kill this guy? 
because he has some different ideas than what you're used to, that's not enough to kill him. But Pontius Pilate was afraid that the Jews would get upset and start an uprising and start to fight back against the Romans. And the Romans didn't like that. They wanted peace. They wanted things to go smoothly. So Pontius Pilate was like, Ugh, I could either let this guy go and make the Jews upset or I could kill this guy and then everybody else is happy and then everything goes smoothly from here. So Pontius Pilate said, it's not on me, but if you guys want to kill him, go ahead and kill him. And then Jesus was then tortured, beaten, whipped. He was then eventually put on a cross and he was hung there to die. Crucifixion was not a, a good way to die. It was torture. It took a long time. Eventually what killed you was the weight of your body hanging there. It got to the point where your body got so heavy that you weren't able to breathe anymore. And you basically suffocated. Jesus suffered for a long time. And in terms of Jesus' suffering, remember, Jesus is a man, but he's also God. God the Son. God the Father is in heaven. And as much as Jesus was suffering, God the Father in heaven was also suffering, watching his son die. Jesus had never sinned, yet he was taking the penalty for sin on his life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, and all of us have sinned, and all of us deserve to die. Not just a physical death where, where our bodies eventually wear out, but eternal death. That's what all of us deserve. And Jesus says, I love all of you enough, and I'm willing to die for you. Jesus didn't have to. He wasn't guilty of anything. We're the guilty ones. And Jesus says, I'm going to die for you so that you don't have to. I'm going to take all this pain, all this torture, all this suffering for you. When you think of all of the, like the saddest moments of your life, of the, of the times where you suffered the most, God has suffered more. God has suffered on the cross as Jesus, and God has suffered in heaven, watching His only begotten Son take the sins of the world on His shoulders and die for it. There were three hours of darkness in the middle of the day as God basically couldn't watch. God being holy, he, he, he's, he's separated from sin. And as Jesus is taking the sin on his life, Jesus felt abandoned. He actually yells out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus is all alone with sin on the cross. Probably the saddest point in human history at this point when Jesus is dying. And yet, when we take a look at our verse today, this is during the, the Last Supper. Jesus is teaching his disciples. This is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. It says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Remember, this is the night before Jesus dies. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going. One of the reasons Jesus had to die, he had to prepare a place for us. We'll be talking more about that next week when we get into the most important event in human history. But Jesus' death was necessary so that Jesus could prepare a place for us. Because in order to prepare that place, we have to be without sin. For us to be without sin, someone has to pay the penalty for that so that we can be found not guilty. That's what Jesus really did. Jesus is our advocate. He stands in our place. When God comes to judge us, we are found, we should be found guilty because of our sin. And just before God places judgment on us, Jesus, our advocate, basically our lawyer, Jesus steps in and says, I object. You cannot punish them because their sin has already been paid for. Jesus paid for that penalty. Jesus says, therefore, they have to be found not guilty because Jesus already took the penalty and we can't be punished twice for the same crime. We can't be punished twice for our sin. Jesus already took the punishment. Jesus is our advocate. He's the one that came and stood in our place to take the penalty and the punishment for sin. And that both that makes my heart heavy and it makes me joyful as well. Because Jesus, and that, that's why we have such honor and praise for Jesus is, is, first of all, He is God, but also for all that He's done for us in our lives. I could go on and on and on, but we'll kind of stop there. So while it is 
sad that Jesus died in our place. Not guilty of anything, yet Jesus died for us. He did it for a purpose, for us, because he loves us and he's preparing a place for us. Don't ever forget that. And we'll talk more about the joyous celebration next week as we talk about Jesus' resurrection. All right, hope you guys have a fantastic week. See you around campus. God bless.